You're watching the Commissioner's Report. I'm your host, Kevin Wattler, and we're here now with Commissioner Dantzler and also Miss Florida 2016, Courtney Saxon. Welcome to the show. Thank you. It's good Thanks to be for here, having Kevin. us. So, Miss, the Miss Florida pageant, why is it in Polk County? It's in Polk County for a couple of reasons. It's a good thing to have here. Um, their executive director, Mary Sullivan, who I met a couple of years ago at another pageant, said she wanted to bring it back to Polk County. She's a Lakeland girl, went to high school here in Lakeland, and she wanted to bring the pageant back to Lakeland and Polk County. Um, she was having some trouble getting some meetings. I was able to set up some meetings, and throughout the meetings, I'm discovering that we're booking a whole lot of hotel rooms, a whole lot of restaurants, so it's a huge economic driver for Polk County. Um, during the slowest time of the years for hotels during the summer and you had a big contingent with you didn't you? I did even finals night not including my family had over 40 people in attendance so wow. that's what it's all about is you know bringing those people into Lakeland. And they didn't all stay in one room so they booked a <laughs> bunch of hotel rooms they had a bunch of different restaurants so the multiplier effect of just Courtney's family and friends <laughs> And you multiply that by 40 or 50 other girls, and then the Miss 50 Florida. 50 with the Miss, and then even our teens sometimes teams. can get up to 30, 40 contestants wow. as well. So their families, their friends, they all come from all across the state, right here in the heart of Florida, right here in Lakeland. And they had the little prince and princesses. Yes, and that our was, princess and princesses. Most girls have between hilarious. one to five, oh, wow. and right. that's their families as well. So you know, we bring not only a lot of girls, but we bring our communities. And, and, and the, the production crew came out of Monroe, Louisiana, so there was mm -hmm. professional production. Uh, it, was, uh, it was a production that rivaled anything that you'd see on TV. Um, Our was, choreographer is from New York. She's mm -hmm. a Broadway choreographer. Um, and so the show is handled truly professionally, and it's, it's a Broadway show. It is. And it moves. It moves. There's not a lot of downtime. I mean, you keep going right on through the program. So it's, as a person who grew up with all brothers and didn't do the pageant scene, my daughter didn't do it. You missed I mean, out. I obviously missed <laughs> but out because welcome. It, was very, it was a night of a lot of entertainment. I mean, a lot of positive mm -hmm. activity and, you know, got to see Courtney crowned that night and she and I become friends over the last six, seven months. So. Wonderful. So it's Courtney. Tell me a little bit about yourself. Obviously, you're not exactly from Polk County. Um, not originally from Polk County, but as Miss Florida, I have moved to Polk County. I live in downtown Lakeland at No Bay, oh. and that is fully because of a sponsorship um, from Broadway Apartments. So I'm very grateful for having the opportunity to live here, but not originally from here. Mm -hmm. From Stark, Florida. It's between Jacksonville and Gainesville. Grew up there on Kingsley Lake my entire life, and then I went off to the University of Central Florida for college when I was about 18 years old, um, and then now I'm currently working on my master's. So I lived in Orlando for five years for school and then moved here to Lakeland for this amazing job. So what's it like being a contestant? Being a contestant in the Miss Florida pageant is a whirlwind. It's a thrill. I mean, honestly, even just thinking about it could bring goosebumps to my arms because, you know, you work so hard for something. For me, I had the goal of being Miss Florida since I was about 12, 11 years old. So I was constantly working, not maybe every day as a young girl, but especially in these last few months leading up to the pageant, I was doing five a day or working five days a week with my trainer, you know, working on my interview, working on my presence, working on my walk. So you has a lot building up to it, all for just a week and all for that final night. So, so you don't just show up that day and no, do it. You don't it's, it's a, yeah. years and years of preparation. Years of preparation and years of building that confidence to be able to go up on stage mm -hmm. and perform. Mm -hmm. oh, what was your platform? My platform is Get Up, Get Moving, Volunteer. And I started that when I was 13 years old with competing in the Miss Florida's Outstanding Teen Pageant. I was Miss Florida's Outstanding Teen in 2008. Um, so this isn't my first time in pageants, mm -hmm. um, but it is you know, keeping with the Miss Florida organization, the Miss America organization. Um, but I started that platform because of my love for giving back to my community. And I saw the need in other communities, not only in my hometown of Stark, Florida, but all across the state. And as Miss Florida's outstanding teen, I saw the need grow. And so through my platform over the past about eight years, I've been able to encourage um, youth, young adults, and even older adults to get involved into their communities and give back because the whole heart of this organization, Miss Florida, Miss America, and even our local titles, it's all about service, a heart of service, having a servant's heart. And I wanted to pick a platform that not only correlated with the organization but correlated with my heart. 
I've done over a thousand hours of volunteer work in community service and that was before the time I graduated from college. It's something that's near and dear to my heart and that's what a platform is all about. Gotcha. And some of your accomplishments, you, what, you want to list some of them? Yeah, um, well, I think my biggest accomplishment, hands down, is in Florida. Of, of course. <laughs> I mean, how many people can say that they have the greatest job in the world and they've won over $30,000 in scholarship because of that job? Um, but before I was Miss Florida, I, um, before I was Miss Florida, I think my greatest accomplishment was winning the Outstanding Student Award for my college. I was voted on by all of the professors within my college, wow. and not only because of grades, but also because of the type of person I was and the student and my servant heart that I, at graduation, was given this, the highest prestigious award in our college. Um, and also, I think one of my biggest accomplishments as Miss Florida was partnering with Advanced Recovery Systems. Um, it's a business of mental health facilities focusing on rehabilitation. And what I do for them as their brand ambassador is traveling all across the state into middle schools and high schools, giving a presentation called Real Talk. And through Real Talk, I'm able to open up and have an honest conversation with these students about drug and alcohol abuse. And I'm the first Miss Florida to embark mm -hmm. on this school tour. And I'm very proud that we have hit the ground running. And my hope throughout this year is to not only improve on that program by booking multiple schools, you know, reaching my goal of 40 schools throughout this year, but also being able to hand kind of the crown over to the next Miss Florida with another part of the job as Real Talk to her. Excellent. And if someone wanted to book you for like a speaking engagement, how would I go about doing that? Well, I do a lot of different types of engagements. If you're thinking of the Real Talk with Miss Florida through Advanced Recovery Systems and our partnership, all you have to do is go to drugrehab.com backslash real talk. All the information is there in booking the schools. But if it's for a speaking engagement, like Todd has a lot of times, you know, connected me with people, whether it's a gala event, um, whether it's a conference or any type of other thing besides that Real Talk school tour, you can personally contact my executive director, Mary Sullivan, at mary at missflorida.org. All requests go through her. Um, she controls your schedule. Yes. <laughs> she not only controls the schedule, she's executive director, businesswoman, pageant mom. She handles it all. I had to go um, through her to get Courtney here just for our commissioner's <laughs> just taping today. today. Yes, so, yes. Uh, she handles it but, all. But she needs to be able to control that part of your schedule so that you're not being pulled all over the state because you're not Miss Polk County. You're Miss Florida so you go all over. Exactly and it's great to have that person that can say okay so you're in Jacksonville on Monday well in my mind I probably wouldn't have thought what's the big deal of going to Miami Monday night and then going to Tampa on Tuesday morning but she's really good about working the map in the right mm -hmm. way and making sure Miss Florida stays healthy and happy during her year so I'm very thankful for all that she does with booking but I do hope anyone who's watching this Please feel free that if you would like to have me at your event, I would love to be a part of it. That's what I want as Miss Florida is to have a big presence in Lakeland. Or if they can't remember that, contact my office and I can put them in touch with Mary. I've got her email address as well. So Perfect, yes. Mm -hmm. And in terms of future contestants, because I know okay. your time is coming up pretty soon. Okay, let's not talk about that, okay? <laughs> coming up soon, I have a few more months. I think like four and a half. Yep. I'm clinging on tight. You're clinging on tight. <laughs> but when that time does come. Yes, and it will come fast. What's your advice to the future and upcoming? First, to be yourself. I think I got the title of Miss Florida by being true to who I was. And um, one of my Miss America sisters, Miss Vermont, told me this week um, and told all of us in giving advice to future girls because we have a 10 minute interview with the judges and she said let the girls know that if you can't be yourself within that 10 minute interview with the judges how can you expect to be yourself for an entire year for an entire state and that really hit home because it's true you really have to stay true to who you are and you know being able to represent this organization you know with that servant's heart um, and then also you know with coming with being true to who you are is think of this as a job it is a true and You've job. approached it that way. Yes. I, I mean, she is very professional in everything Thank that she's you. done. It's been a pleasure getting to know Courtney and her approach is she's not just sitting around waiting for something to happen. She's out proactively promoting the pageant, promoting the contest, promoting everything that goes with it. So she's been a great ambassador for the Miss Florida program. Thank you. Thank you. Thank and you. And Commissioner Nashley, back to you. What is the process, Nick? How hard was it to get it back to Polk County or the, the, the pageant to Polk County? Um, once we got some buy-in, then everybody worked real hard to make it happen. I was at just a couple of the meetings. I wasn't at a lot of them. 
uh, but Mary Sullivan uh, and last year's Miss Florida, Mary Catherine, Mary Catherine, you know, they did yeoman's work for the pageant, um, but negotiations had to go on with the hotels, they had to book the theater, the Yawkey Theater at the Lakeland Center. Um, contracts had to be drawn up, so we've got them for five years at least, and hopefully we will we will be so welcoming they will not ever want to leave us again. Um, Sounds good to me. Yeah. But, uh, I'm, all, I'm all excited for that. But, but the city of Lakeland bought into it, Polk County Tourism, Sports right. Marketing, like I said before, there was a lot of moving pieces that went into bringing it back. And again, I wasn't at every meeting, but everyone I was at, everyone's goal was to bring it back here. And it all started with the drive of Mary Sullivan, in my opinion. It did, She's yeah. the one who lit the fire. Uh, it got me excited about it. I uh, called Mayor Wiggs and he said, when do you want to meet? I mean, it was that quick. And then a lot of grinding work had to go on. Um, they got through it and we're lucky to have them. And um, Courtney's the first one from Polk County. Well, in the community of Lakeland, once you know all that groundwork is done, because right. I kind of saw it after that groundwork was over, but once that was done and the connections were made right. through Todd, through Mary, with Miss Florida last year, this community has just wrapped their arms around us. And Miss Florida I, 2017 is going to inherit a lot of that hard work yes. that you and Mary have done, mm -hmm. uh, setting up living arrangements. Uh, and all that goes with it. So. Yeah, the car, the furniture, all, all of that she will hopefully inherit it, but in understanding how you know special it is to be in Lakeland right. and it really is. We're grateful to be here and we're thankful for the community of Lakeland for Absolutely. you know welcoming us with open arms and embracing us all year round. Okay, perfect. And Miss Florida, tell me a little bit of some of the things you do with the responsibilities that fall under Crown. Um, well, my day to day is totally different from Monday to Tuesday. It's, you know, so different. I look at last week to this week. Last week was I was going to, you know, four to five schools all throughout the week, focusing on, you know, my two school tours and then a few events here and there. But I can go on, say, a Monday at 8 a.m., 9 a.m., and talk to kids about real talk, going into high schools and middle schools. And then that afternoon, I might have a business lunch right. with a business leader in Lakeland, focusing on sponsorship or focusing on you know the future of the Miss Florida pageant. And then come the night, I might be at a baseball event shaking hands with the governor. It, it ranges, and I'm grateful for that. Um, but it's a lot of different things every day, a lot of volunteering, a lot of speaking, um, in the fall, we invited her to be at our company barbecue. So she came as a Leland yes. Young's barbecue a barn. I got her my cowgirl boots. She got her <laughs> cowgirl boots. And when a beautiful young woman with a crown and a sash walks up, they don't need it. They forget about the commissioners. <laughs> Grady wouldn't have stood a chance. They, they came up and she was the highlight of the party. And um, My favorite just, thing is this Florida, I think, is meeting people right. and getting to build a connection with someone. And that's genuine from her, I can assure oh, you. Well, thank you. Thank you for that. And so I think that's what kind of has helped me in the title of Miss Florida is going to all these events is for me it's just an opportunity to meet people it's an opportunity to connect it's an opportunity to say hey what's your story mm -hmm. I'd love to tell you mine I'd love to tell you about this amazing organization that is giving me so much and then it turns into something big yeah, yeah. <laughs> right. well Commissioner Dantzler we're wrapping up now and almost out of time what are your final remarks uh, couldn't be more proud of Courtney and I couldn't be more proud of the pageant that, and what it has done for Polk County. It's a class event. I invite everyone to come out. It's the week before July 4th. The crowning uh, July 1st. July Please 1st. come out. And there's stuff, there's judging and contests throughout the week. So mm -hmm. if you can't make the final, um, you can do different events throughout the week. And, and we're trying to come up with other events, some fun events to get the community involved. So listen out for those on the radio and on TV as it gets closer. Right. And Courtney, what about you? I just want to say thank you so much for having me. It has been an honor to not only represent the state of Florida, but to have this home in Lakeland and in Polk County. I'm grateful for all of the sponsors, um, No Bay, Badcock, my car sponsor um, with Cox Chevrolet in Bradenton. I mean, people have just truly wrapped their arms around me. So my ending would just be a thank you to everyone. Perfect. And with that, we're going to close off this part of the show, but we have more coming up right after this break. <laughs> So, same time next week? Well, of course. I'm Bill Skelton, your guest host today. I'm sitting in for Kevin Wattler, who's on assignment. Joining me in the studio today is District Commissioner 2 and Chairman of the Board of County Commissioners, Melanie Bell. Glad to be and here. And our special guest, 
president and CEO of Citizens Bank and Trust, Greg Littleton. Thank you, Bill. Thank you both for joining us. Mm -hmm. Commissioner Bell, the topic today is business recognition in Polk County. Um, we're going to start with a, a brief video clip that's going to set us up for the rest of the show. As we all know, small business makes up a majority part of businesses here in the United States. We are so fortunate here in Polk County to have many, many small businesses that adds to our economic impact each day. As being chair of the Polk County Board of County Commissioners, it's my initiative for 2017 to recognize small businesses. Today we have Citizens Bank and Trust here that has been here in Polk County invested in our community for over 100 years. We have the president uh, here with us, uh, Mr. Greg Littleton. They have been invested in our community, not only as giving back as philanthropists, but also giving the jobs, um, employment that they have done each and every day. I would like to thank Citizens Bank and Trust for their investment and wish them good luck as they continue on. Like many families in Polk County in the early 1900s, the family of Latimer Maxey was invested in the citrus industry with 70 acres of citrus grove along the south side of Lake Reedy near Frostproof. After a short stint from home, then 27-year-old Latimer returned back to the Frostproof area and invested in citrus land of his own. After selling his citrus operation, Maxey organized a new company called the Lake Reedy Packing Company. Later, the company would be renamed L.C. Maxey Incorporated. In 1920, Latt determined there was a big need for banking in the area to support the booming citrus industry. So he, along with 20 other businessmen, formed Citizens Bank of Frostproof, which we now know as Citizens Bank and Trust. For nearly 50 years, Latt's brother, John Maxey, managed the bank in downtown Frostproof, which still remains intact to this day. After John Maxey's tenure, the bank was passed down to Latt's grandchildren and remains a family bank to this day. Much has changed in the 100 years of the bank's operation. In 1998, Citizens Bank and Trust expanded its services by adding a Lake Wales and Haines City branch. In the coming years, the bank would expand its reach by acquiring other banks and opening additional offices in cities across Polk County which now include 12 locations. While the growth of the bank has made a big change on the number of Polk County residents it serves, one thing that has not changed in its nearly 100 years of operation is their commitment to provide quality banking services to the community and support its neighbors through active community involvement. Citizens Bank and Trust employees have logged over 10,000 volunteer hours and partner with many wonderful organizations such as the Polk Museum of Art, Girls Inc., the SPCA of Florida, Meals on Wheels, Lakeland Volunteers in Medicine, and Exploration 5 Children's Museum, just to name a few. The bank's commitment to its core values and the exceptional care of its customers and neighbors has culminated in many awards and recognitions over the years, including a three-year running Best Places to Work Award and the Ledger 2016 Best of the Best Award. We are proud to recognize Citizens Bank and Trust as one of Polk County's businesses of excellence. That was a great video um, showing the, mm -hmm. the beginning and, and the uh, history of, uh, of Citizens Bank and Trust. Um, you must have been proud of that, Greg. I really was. Um, I really love the historical aspect of the video. We're really proud of our heritage. We're proud of our roots. And we're proud of the bank that we've become today, and I thought that the video did a really nice job of taking, it, taking us all the way back to the very beginning to show the progressive bank that we've become today. Yes, uh, still family owned? Still family owned. Still only in Polk County? Still only in Polk County. We're three generations of family ownership and almost 100 years of community banking. Right. And Commissioner, I guess growing up in Fort Meade, you saw the growth of the bank as well. I have. We don't have a citizens bank in Fort Meade, uh, but hopefully one day they'll spread their wings and be throughout the county. But that's why I chose this uh, bank. As you know, it was my initiative as being chair this year to spotlight small businesses throughout the county. And I chose Citizens Bank because they've been here so long, you know, deep rooted in the county, and they started actually in my district, and Frostproof was their first bank on Wall Street. And I thought that was very interesting <laughs> that, you know, the first bank. But um, 
for you know their customer service and the employees that they have hired throughout the years that has given jobs to Polk Countyans but their philanthropy, what they have done, you know, when they go, they don't have to be in, have a bank in that community, but they're invested in every community throughout the Polk County of all 17 municipalities. You can see their mark wherever they, you know, they've been in that community and they've worked in that community. Well, I'm glad that you brought that up. And, and before I forget, uh, Fort Meade may get a branch before long. A little birdie uh, mentioned that to me before. <laughs> That's right. But you were talking about their community involvement, how they partner with organizations throughout Polk County. I had the good fortune of, of, of meeting Greg at a commissioner's port a couple years ago and, and had uh, discussions about their uh, community partnerships. Greg, can you tell me some of the organizations, pardon me, organizations that you're still working with? Sure, sure. We, uh, we work with most of the chambers in the county. Uh, we work with all of the economic development councils in the county from the CFDC down to uh, the local uh, economic development councils in Haines City and Winter Haven and Lakeland and Lake Wales. Uh, we, we work hard to support the arts uh, with Lake Wales Arts uh, Center. We're the primary sponsor for the big art show this weekend in Lake Wales. Uh, we're the primary sponsor for the Polk Museum of Art Gala this year. Uh, we take part in Bloomin' Arts. Our officers are involved in just about every civic club across the county. In fact, we've tracked for the last several years and our employees volunteer over 10,000 hours a year and that's something that we're really proud of. Give of, of your time and money. That's right. So you have your, your civic and charitable organizations that you support, events that you sponsor. Uh, obviously, your employees invest their time. Um, Commissioner, what kind of difference does that make for uh, Polk County, the things that they can achieve that sometimes, you know, government can't do for its citizens? Well, I think what I have seen, the best work of them is being involved in Polk Vision. You know, Greg has been the chairman of Polk Vision. Yes. So, or, uh, so not only is Greg there, but he sends employees and they're involved as far as aligning Polk County. So their investment that they have made just by putting in hours and serving on boards for this county is invaluable. Sure, and Greg, I'm sure it starts with your family roots. I mean, the, the family roots of the bank with the Maxi family, you know, some 80 so years ago, I guess, maybe more at this point. So, you know, obviously the bank is invested in the communities that it serves. Uh, by extension, obviously, it, it serves greater Polk County. Um, you mentioned the, the art event that's coming up this weekend. Uh, can you tell us some of the other things that, that people can look forward to in the future with respect to some of the events that you're sponsoring or participating in? Sure. As we've said, the art show this weekend in Lake Wales, and then the last Saturday of, of this month, we're also the, the main sponsor for Community Fest in Winter Haven. Uh, the Taste of Winter Haven coming up later, and then in March, as I mentioned, the Polk Museum of Art Gala. Those are uh, three or four of the bigger things that we've got coming up in the next month. But also Moonlight Music in Fort Meade. Moonlight Mead. Music in Fort yes. Meade, that's right, mm -hmm. yes. Wow. So uh, you, you guys are obviously busy as an organization. I'm sure you're, you're busy you know, running between events, and I'm sure you, you probably make your share of events. Um, let's kind of talk more about uh, your program to recognize uh, deserving businesses throughout Polk County. Now you started this initiative. I did. Yes. And I, I understand that you've extended uh, the opportunity to other uh, commissioners to maybe present businesses that they feel are deserving of the same recognition. And I've asked other commissioners to come up with two businesses that they would like to spotlight. Small business makes up America. You were always recognizing large businesses here in the county or in Florida or you know the United States. But I think it's time that we start emphasizing on our small businesses and what they do in our community. Yeah, I think that's particularly timely now with some of the things that are happening in the state legislature with regard yes. to Enterprise Florida and, and Visit Florida. And and certainly small business, you know, they're the backbone of the country. I'm sure the bank started out as a small business and, and look at it now, 12, almost 13 branches later, I'm sure you have tremendous deposits, you know, you've got a tremendous payroll. So, you know, obviously, you know, you're you're uh, committed to Polk County, you're helping uh, citizens throughout Polk County, and you're also helping businesses, I would guess, through your lending. Can you talk to that? Our bank is very well-rounded when it comes to, you know, people ask you, what kind of bank are you? Are you a consumer bank or a commercial bank? And I'd like to think that we're very well-rounded. Um, we, we, through our commercial department, and we primarily serve small to middle market types of businesses. 
and we had loan production of about $80 million in Polk County last year, and that's something that we're proud of, and I think that that really helps promote the economy. Uh, it trickles down uh, not only to people's paychecks, but those, those folks will take their paycheck and they'll go shop at the local grocery store or what have you, and uh, you know, the, the cycle is endless. Yeah, and um, given your continued growth, which was, was featured in the video, um, obviously, you guys grew in good times and bad. We I did. think even through the Great Recession, you expanded your, your, your banks, uh, you know, your, your locations, and certainly the volume of your business. We did. In fact, uh, you know, something that we're proud of and that, that we like to point out is that we, we went around, we were around through the Great Depression as well. And we, uh, we were before FDIC insurance. Uh, and of course, yes, we did make it through the Great Recession. And I'll tell you that uh, the number of community banks, sadly, in Florida are down about half of what they were before the Great Recession in 2007. And we did continue to expand and we did continue to grow. And over the last uh, seven or eight years, we've probably added $100 million in total assets to our bank. Obviously a remarkable success story. And of course, you want to feature other success stories, uh, businesses uh, throughout Polk County. Um, we've kind of touched on economic development a little bit. We recognize that you uh, were a former uh, uh, chairman of the CFDC, mm -hmm. the Central Florida Development Council, and you're still a board member. Um, and I know that, you know, you feature arts and you feature economic development. Um, don't want to ask you which one's closest <laughs> to your heart, mm -hmm. but um, kind of speak uh, a little bit to both, okay. let's say. Well, I would say it goes hand in hand with each other. In order to bring high wage, high skill jobs to Polk County, you need to have a connection with the arts. Professionals, when they're looking to move into a community, they are looking for an arts community. What's going on? You know, what's on a Saturday night? What can they do with their family during the day? You know, or just not the arts, but our trails that we have here in Polk County, our lakes and all. So it all fits together. And, Citizens Bank has been so involved with all everything I've just named. They they have you know they're grounded in each one of these uh, communities. Well, it, it's apparent that the bank kind of has a vision. The county shares that vision. Mm -hmm. Obviously, it's it's what's best for your customers, what's best for your constituents, with the idea that you know Polk County as a whole is going to benefit. And I'm glad that you mentioned the you know the recreational aspect as well because it does kind of go hand in hand with um, you know the attraction of business they do they do want to see the arts they do want to see the recreational opportunities and it's great that uh, through your sponsorship through your giving of, of the bank as well as the bank employees um, that together that you know uh, we continue can continue to see this county you know grow in ways that were envisioned when the bank started years mm -hmm. ago so um, well I think with great leadership and Greg has been a great leader for the bank and each one of his employees, if you were to talk to any of them, they're all so proud of their job that they have and, and who they represent, the Wilson family. Well, I, I'm sure that's uh, fruit that's born of the way that you treat your employees and, and the idea that uh, you make it probably easier for them to give. You encourage them to give. And that, you know, that's a great philosophy. And, and certainly, you know, we've benefited by it as a county, as you can attest to. Uh, could you speak a little more to that philosophy? Sure. I, I think it goes all the way back to Mr. Maxey, and I believe that supporting our community and giving back to the community has been at the core of what we do, and, and that goes for the last nearly 100 years. But we do uh, not only support, but we encourage our employees to be involved in the community and think that it's important. And it's uh, not only good for the community, but it's good for our bank as well. It's uh, it's. It's good for our folks to be out, to be seen, but most of all, it's good for the communities that we serve. And when the community prospers, so do all of the businesses, including our bank. Well, it, it seems to me that's uh, kind of like the golden rule at play. Mm -hmm. So uh, in that respect, I guess it helps Imperial Polk County. Absolutely. So, well, thank you both for joining us today. Thank you, Bill. Uh, I kind of came out of retirement. <laughs> so I was glad uh, to be here. It was nice seeing you again. You too. It was great sitting with you. Yeah, you too. And, uh, and thank you one and all for joining us for this episode of the Commissioner's Report. And uh, please join us for future editions.